Smile and learn. Hey, hello. How are you doing? I was just about to start my daily exercise routine to keep my nuts and screws in shape. What I like most is doing yoga. I am pretty good at it. Thanks to my body, I can bend myself easily to every angle. Do you know what an angle is? You don't? I'll tell you about it. An angle is the space between two straight lines that start at the same point. For example, right now, I am tracing an angle with my body. The straight lines of an angle are called segments, and the point where both lines meet is called the vertex. In my body, the vertex would be my hips and the segments, the upper and lower parts of my body. We measure angles in degrees. Degrees indicate how open each angle is. Depending on the angle opening, we classify angles in Acute angles are those angles that measure less than 90 degrees. Right angles are those angles that measure 90 degrees. Obtuse angles are those angles that measure more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. Flat angles are those angles that measure exactly 180 degrees. This is my favorite pose. It's easy peasy. <laughs> Reflex angles measure more than 180 degrees and less than 360 degrees. See how good I am at this pose? Look, I could stretch even more. Ouch! I think I overdid it a little. Well, that's a full rotation angle. These angles measure 360 degrees. I think that's the last time I'm trying this pose. It hurts! Have you seen how many angles I can bend my body into? Even though today is not my day. Let's recap what we've learned. An angle is the space between two straight lines that we call segments, and the point where both lines meet is called the vertex. To classify angles, we measure their opening. This is measured in degrees. Depending on the angle opening, angles can be acute. They measure less than 90 degrees. Right, they measure exactly 90 degrees. Obtuse, they measure between 90 and 180 degrees. Flat, they measure exactly 180 degrees. Reflex, they measure more than 180 degrees. Full rotation, they measure 360 degrees. And that is all about angles. I hope you've learned a lot, friends. I think I'm going to call an ambulance. Smile and learn. Today, we're going to learn about the triangle. Do you know how many types of triangles there are? A triangle is a geometric shape with three sides. One, two, and three. The point where two sides meet is called the vertex, and all triangles have three vertices. There is an interior angle for each vertex. Did you know that if we added all angles together, the result would always be 180 degrees? We classify triangles depending on their sides or angles. If we classified triangles depending on their sides, we would get three types. Equilateral, isosceles, and scalene triangles. 
A triangle with three equal sides is called an equilateral triangle. A triangle with two equal sides is called an isosceles triangle. And a triangle whose sides are all different is called a scalene triangle. If we classified triangles depending on their angles, we would get three types. The acute triangle, the right triangle, and the obtuse triangle. A triangle with three acute angles is called an acute triangle. A triangle with one right angle is called a right triangle. And a triangle with one obtuse angle is called an obtuse triangle. Let's recap. Classifying triangles depending on their sides, we have the equilateral triangle, in which all sides are equal, the isosceles triangle, in which two sides are equal, and the scalene triangle, in which all sides are different. Classifying triangles depending on their angles, we have the acute triangle, with three acute angles, the right triangle, with one right angle, and the obtuse triangle, with one obtuse angle. Now you know all the types of triangles. Way to go! Can you see that wheel over there? Look at that Ferris wheel! Today, we're going to tell you about two geometric shapes that you can see everywhere. The circle and the circumference. The circumference is a curved, closed, flat line whose points are the same distance from the center. Look around you. Do you see any circumferences? That's right! This ring or this hoop! The circle is a plane figure whose boundaries are a circumference. Look around you. Do you see any circles? That's right! This coin or this pizza! The difference between a circumference and a circle is that the circumference is the line around the circle. And the circle is everything the circumference contains. Or in other words, the circle is inside of the circumference. As you have been able to see, the circumference is a line. That's why we measure its length in yards, inches, or miles. However, the circle is a plane figure. That's why we measure its surface in square yards, square inches, or square miles. We can distinguish the following elements in a circumference and a circle. The center is the point from which all the points of the circumference are the same distance. The radius is a segment which connects the center with any point of the circumference. The diameter is a segment which connects two points of the circumference passing through the center. It divides the circle into two parts. As you can see, the diameter is twice the radius. The chord is the segment which connects any two points of the circumference. The arc is the part of the circumference that lies between two points. The sector is the region between two radii and their arc. Look! It's a slice of pizza! Let's recap the parts of the circle and the circumference. The center, the radius, the diameter, the chord, the arc, and the sector. Well done! Awesome roundup! See you soon, friends! Hello friends! Today, we'd like to introduce a very famous number found in all circumferences and circles you see around you. It's number pi. Number pi is a mathematical constant which indicates the relation between the perimeter and the diameter of a circumference. But 
How can we describe this relation? It's about fitting the diameter as many times as possible into the perimeter of the circumference. Let's look here. One, two, three, and a little bit more. That's it. We can fit three diameters into the circumference in a small part, 0.14. That's why we know that pi equals 3.14. We say that it's a constant because number pi is the same for every circumference in the world. In other words, this number is always equal to 3.14. Would you like to check that? It's very simple. Look for a measuring tape and measure the perimeter of a round object you have at home. For example, the wheel of this bike. Divide the length of the perimeter by its diameter and the result you'll get will be 3.14. Let's see. The perimeter of this wheel is 98.8 inches and its diameter is 31.4 inches. If we divide 98.8 by 31.4, we'll get 3.14. Now measure the perimeter of this swimming pool. Divide the length by its diameter, and you'll also get 3.14. Let's see. The perimeter of this circular swimming pool is 51.5 feet, and its diameter is 16.4 feet. If we divide 51.5 by 16.4, we'll get 3.14. It's like magic, isn't it? The result we get every time we divide the perimeter by the diameter of any circle in the world will always be 3.14. This happens because pi is a mathematical constant. In other words, it's always the same number regardless of what the circles or circumferences may measure. There's a very interesting fact we haven't told you about yet. Pi is represented by this Greek letter, and it's an infinite number. 3.14159265358979323834 And the digits go on forever and ever. In everyday life, this number is shortened to 3.14 to be expressed in a simple way and make calculations easier. Today we learned that number pi is one of the most important mathematical constants. Many architecture, mechanics, or engineering projects wouldn't be possible without the number pi. Hello everyone! Today, we're going to tell you how to calculate the length of the circumference. You're asking yourselves, what is it, and what's it for? The circumference is a curved, closed, flat line whose points are the same distance from the center. Owing to the fact that it's a line, its length is measured in feet, inches, or miles. The concept length of a circumference can also be referred to as the perimeter of a circle or the perimeter of the circumference. To start with, let's recap some elements of the circumference, like the center, the radius, or the diameter. Remember that the diameter is twice the radius, or in other words, the radius is half the diameter. The length of the circumference equals twice the radius, by pi. Or in other words, the diameter of the circumference, by pi. Remember that pi is 3.14. We are always going to use this number. Let's look at some examples. This circumference has a radius of 2.36 inches. To calculate its length, we should multiply the radius by 2 and multiply by pi. Great! The length of this circumference equals 14.82 inches. Let's look at some real-life situations. Mark wants to decorate this box of chocolates using some wrapping string. The radius of the circumference of the box 
measures 4 inches. How many inches of wrapping string does he need to buy? To figure it out, we need to calculate the length of this circumference. We multiply the radius by 2 and by pi. Excellent! Mark needs to buy 25.12 inches of wrapping string to decorate the box of chocolates. Let's look at another example. The mayor wants to put a fence around the fountain of the village. The fountain has a circular shape, and its diameter is 29.5 feet. How many feet of fencing material does he need to buy? To figure it out, we need to calculate the length of this circumference. We multiply the diameter by pi. The mayor needs to buy 92.71 feet of fencing material to surround the fountain. For every circumference in the world, pi is always the same number. That is to say, it equals 3.14. If you want to learn more about it, watch our video about the number pi. As you have seen, knowing how to calculate the length of a circumference is very important in construction, mechanics, or engineering. How would you like to try with another example? Today we're going to talk about polygons, those geometric shapes found everywhere. Can you see that sign over there? Look at that kite! I'm going to draw them in my sketchbook. Wow! All these objects are polygons! A polygon is a plane figure described by a closed polygonal line. Look at these shapes! Can you see a polygon? The first shape is not a polygon because its polygonal line is not closed. The second shape is not a polygon either because it has a curved side. That's it! The third shape is a polygon because it's formed by a closed polygonal line. Polygons are formed in several parts. The sides are each of the lines or segments that form the polygon. The vertices are the points where all sides meet. The angles are the space determined between two adjacent sides. The diagonals are the segments that connect two non-adjacent vertices. We can classify them in different ways, regular or irregular and depending on the number of their sides. A regular polygon has all sides and angles equal. An irregular polygon does not have all angles, nor all sides equal. Here you can see some examples of regular and irregular polygons. Polygons can also be classified depending on the number of their sides. Triangles are those polygons that have three sides. This slice of pizza has a triangular shape. Quadrilaterals have four sides. This sandwich or this kite are quadrilaterals. Pentagons have five sides. This swimming pool has the shape of a pentagon. Hexagons have six sides. These honeycomb cells have the shape of a hexagon. There are many types of polygons, but to learn how to read them, you need to use the corresponding prefix. It's very easy! A seven-sided polygon is a heptagon, and an eight-sided polygon? It's an octagon! And so on. Let's recap everything we learned about polygons. They are plane figures described by a closed polygonal line. They are formed by parts, sides, vertices, 
angles and diagonals. They can be classified in regular or irregular and also depending on the number of their sides. Like math, polygons are everywhere. You only need to look around you and pay close attention. Hello everyone! Today we're going to tell you how to find the perimeter of a polygon. Many of you are asking yourselves, what is the perimeter and what is it for? The perimeter is the sum of the sides of a geometric figure. That is to say, it's the measuring unit of its area. That's why it's measured in feet, inches, miles, or other measuring units. To find the perimeter of a figure, we should add the lengths of each one of its sides. Let's look at an example. This triangle has three sides that measure 12, 14, and 10. To find its perimeter, we should add 12 plus 14 plus 10, which equals 36 inches. Awesome! This triangle has a perimeter of 36 inches. This square has four equal sides. Each side measures 20 feet. To find its perimeter, we can use two strategies. Add 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 equals 80. Or multiply four sides by 20 feet. Exactly! This square has a perimeter of 80 feet. In architecture or construction, knowing the perimeter is very important to be able to calculate, among other things, the amount of material we're going to need. Now we're going to look at some examples. Anna wants to put a fence around the vegetable garden she built in her yard. The space has a rectangular shape and measures 6 feet wide and 10 feet long. How many feet of fence material does she need to buy? To figure it out, we need to find the perimeter of this rectangle. We can use two strategies. Add 6 plus 6 plus 10 plus 10, which equals 32. Or multiply two sides by 6 feet and two sides by 10 feet. Then we would have to add the results. That is to say, 2 by 6, which equals 12. And 2 by 10, which equals 20. And now we add the results. 12 plus 20, which equals 32. Great! Anna needs to buy 32 feet of fencing material to fence her vegetable garden. Let's look at another example. John wants to glue a white tape around his pool to separate it from the grass. The pool has this shape. Its sides measure 16 feet, 36 feet, 29 feet, 23 feet, 13 feet, and 13 feet. How many feet of tape does he need to buy? To figure it out, we need to find the perimeter of this geometric figure. For this, we should add all its sides. 16 feet plus 36 feet plus 29 feet plus 23 feet plus 13 feet plus 13 feet, which equals 130. Amazing! John needs to buy 130 feet of white tape to glue around his pool. As you have seen, Knowing how to find the perimeter is very important and also very simple. How would you like to try with another example? Look for a measuring tape and find the perimeter of your room. Today, we're going to learn about the types of lines. Do you know how many types of lines are there? Here they come! Let's start with the straight line. This is a straight line. First, we'll look at the horizontal lines. Horizontal lines look like the horizon or like the tightrope of an acrobat. Whoops! Cheerio! Now this is a vertical line. Vertical lines look like the trunk of this palm tree or like this microphone stand. Base, keep practicing. This is an oblique line. Oblique lines look like this slide. 
Or like this skateboarding ramp. Wow, so fast! Now here's two lines, one next to the other. They're called parallel lines because they never touch. The lines in this notebook or the steps of this ladder are parallel. We can turn a parallel line to make it vertical. When parallel lines crisscross, they change to perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines look like this crossroads. Or the frame of this window. What a lovely day. Straight lines can also be polygonal. Or closed like this triangle. The square. Or the pentagon. Straight lines can be open too. Like these ones for example. They look like mountains. Let's have a look at curved lines. Curved lines can be open or closed. Wavy curves are in the same group as curved lines. Like this curvy path. Or this worm. Spiral curves are in the same group as open curves. Like this snail. or this lollipop. So yummy! Closed curves are like this pond. Or this ketchup stain. Awesome! Let's recap. Horizontal line. Vertical line. Oblique line. Parallel line. Perpendicular line. Closed polygonal line. Open polygonal line. Curved lines. Spiral curves Closed curves You learned everything about all types of lines! Well done! Today, we're going to learn about geometric plane shapes. Do you know how many types are there? Here we go! Do you know what this is? Easy peasy! It's a circle! A circle is round. It's as round as this lemon half. Or like this clock. It's so late! What about this shape? It looks very much like a circle, but it's not. This is an oval. It has a flat face. It looks like this rugby ball. Or like this egg. Oopsie! This is not an oval anymore. This is a triangle. It's a polygon with three sides and three angles. The triangle is like this piece of cheese. Or like this slice of pizza. Yum yum! It looks delicious! This is a square. This square looks like sandwich bread. Or like this cookie. No more food talk. I'm feeling really hungry. This is a rectangle. It has four sides, like the square. But they're not identical. Only its opposite sides are equal in length. A rectangle looks like this bill. Or like this picture frame. This is a diamond shape. Its four sides are identical, but its angles are not. Meaning this one and this one are equal, and so are these two. A diamond looks like the jewel on this crown. Or like this kite. This one right here is a pentagon. 
pentagons have five sides. One, two, three, four, and five. A pentagon looks like this birdhouse. Or like these football stitches. Finally, I'll show you the hexagon. Hexagons have six sides. A hexagon is like this stop sign. Or like this beehive. We better go now. Bees are getting angry. Recap. Circle. Oval. Triangle. Square. Rectangle. Diamond. Pentagon. Hexagon. Now you know everything about plane shapes. Well done! Today we're going to learn about geometric shapes. Do you know how many types are there? Here they come! Take a guess. What is this? Yes, it's a sphere! Spheres look like this tennis ball. Or like this bowling ball. And this is a cube. Cubes have four identical square sides. Dice are cubes. And this box is also a cube. This shape is a cylinder. Cylinders have two identical flat circular bases. A cylinder is like this can. Or like this candle. This is a prism. Both faces of the prism are identical. There are many types of prisms. This milk carton is a prism. As you can see, both of its faces are identical squares. But in this prism, its bases are triangles. It looks like a skating ramp. Wow, so fast! This one is super easy. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's a pyramid! Its base is a polygon, and its sides are triangles. All sides meet at a central point, the apex. Just like the pyramids in ancient Egypt. Or like this Indian style teepee. Finally, I'll show you a cone. As you can see, the cone has a circular base and a vertex. The cone looks like this birthday hat. Or like this ice cream cone. Oopsie! Well done. Let's recap all geometric shapes. Sphere. Cube. Cylinder. Prism. Pyramid. Cone. Now you know everything about geometric shapes. Way to go! We've learned so much in just one video. Did you know there are many more videos? Imagine how much you could learn. Subscribe to the Smile and Learn educational channel to learn and have fun at the same time.